Guilty continues by Rodney's Publishing. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this piece may not reflect the views of the author or its creators. Please view in its entirety before committing. Flames. Everywhere flames. They danced and roared, consuming the house with a hungry fury. Clarence stood frozen, the heat licking at his face, the acrid smell of smoke stinging his nostrils. His eyes wide with a mixture of horror and something else, something cold and detached were fixed on the inferno that had been his home. He could hear the crackling of timber, the shattering of glass, a symphony of destruction playing out before him. Lisa. The name echoed in his mind, a whisper against the roar of the blaze. She was in there, somewhere within that inferno. He'd been asleep, a heavy, dreamless sleep when the smell of smoke woke him. The house was already ablaze. He'd stumbled out, coughing, disoriented, the fire escape his only thought. Now he watched as the flames reached higher, devouring everything in their path. There was a strange sense of unreality to it all, as if he were watching a movie, a particularly gruesome one. But the heat was real, the smell of burning wood and melting plastic all too real. He should do something, try to get inside, try to save her. But his feet remained rooted to the spot, his body paralyzed by a strange inertia. The fire engines arrived, sirens wailing, breaking the spell that held Clarence captive. He watched as firefighters, brave men and women, charged into the inferno, battling the blaze with hoses and axes. He should feel something, grief, despair, anything. But all he felt was a strange numbness, a hollowness that seemed to spread through him like a chill. Days turned into weeks. The investigation concluded it was an electrical fault, a tragic accident. People offered condolences, their faces etched with sympathy. He accepted them with a stoicism that surprised even him. He was supposed to be devastated, wasn't he? A grieving husband mourning the loss of his wife. But beneath the surface of his grief, another emotion stirred, dark and unwelcome relief. He tried to push it down, to bury it beneath a mountain of guilt and remorse, but it lingered, a constant whisper in the back of his mind. He was free. The thought, terrible in its finality, echoed through him. Free from the constant bickering, the endless cycle of arguments and recriminations that had become their marriage. Free from Lisa. The memories came in flashes, vivid and unwelcome. Lisa, her face contorted in anger, her voice shrill as she berated him for some perceived slight. The endless complaints, the constant dissatisfaction that seemed to permeate every aspect of their lives. He remembered the early days, the excitement of their courtship, the joy of their wedding day. When had it all gone so wrong? When had the laughter faded, replaced by a bitter silence that stretched between them like a chasm? He tried, he really had, tried to please her, to make her happy, but it was never enough. There was always something else, some new grievance, some new reason to be unhappy. He'd started to withdraw, seeking solace in his work in the company of friends. Anything to escape the oppressive atmosphere that had settled over their home. He'd told himself it was just a rough patch, that things would get better. But deep down, he knew the truth. The love, the passion that had once bound them together had burned itself out leaving behind only ashes and resentment. He couldn't stay in that house, surrounded by memories, by ghosts. He sold it quickly, eager to escape the suffocating weight of the past. He found a new job in a new city, a fresh start, a chance to reinvent himself. The new apartment was small, but it was his. He filled it with new furniture, new books, new music, desperately trying to erase all traces of Lisa of his old life. He threw himself into his work, long hours blurring into days, then weeks. He avoided relationships, wary of repeating the mistakes of the past. He told himself he was happy, content with his solitary existence. But at night, when the city outside his window finally fell silent, the memories returned whispering accusations in the darkness. He tried to outrun the guilt, the gnawing sense of responsibility that clung to him like a shroud. 
He volunteered at a local soup kitchen, donated to charities, anything to atone for the relief, the shameful secret he harbored in his heart. But the memories were relentless. He saw Lisa's face everywhere, in the crowds on the street, in the faces of strangers, heard her voice in the rustling leaves, in the hum of traffic. He started having nightmares, vivid, terrifying dreams where the fire raged again, consuming everything in its path. He would wake up in a cold sweat, the smell of smoke lingering in his nostrils, the echo of Lisa's screams ringing in his ears. He was trapped, caught in a web of his own making, haunted by the past, unable to escape the consequences of his own thoughts. One evening, exhausted after a particularly grueling day at work, Clarence returned to his apartment building. As he stepped into the elevator, he noticed a faint smell of smoke. He dismissed it as his imagination, his senses still on high alert after all these months. He reached his floor and stepped out into the hallway. The smell was stronger now, acrid and unmistakable. He heard the sound of shouting, the panicked cries of his neighbors. He looked up and saw it. Flames licking their way down the hallway, their orange glow reflecting in his wide, terrified eyes. Panic seized him. He stumbled back, his mind reeling. Not again, it couldn't be happening again, but the heat, the choking smoke, the frantic shouts were all too real. The fire escape. He had to get to the fire escape. He turned and ran, his heart pounding against his ribs. But the hallway was filling rapidly with thick black smoke, making it difficult to breathe, to see. He coughed, his eyes stinging. He reached the end of the hallway and fumbled for the fire escape door. It wouldn't budge, it was stuck, jammed tight. Panic surged through him, cold and suffocating. He was trapped. He could hear the roar of the flames getting closer, feel the intense heat scorching his skin. He pounded on the door, his fist raw, his voice hoarse from shouting, Help me! Someone please help me! But his cries were swallowed by the inferno, lost in the chaos of the fire. He sank to his knees, overcome by a wave of despair. It wasn't fair, he'd already lost everything, his wife, his home, his peace of mind. Now he was going to lose his life too consumed by the same flames that had taken Lisa. He closed his eyes, tears streaming down his face, a mixture of fear and regret washing over him. He thought of Lisa, of the life they'd shared, the good times and the bad. He thought of the relief he'd felt at her passing, the guilt that had haunted him ever since. Was this his punishment? Was this the price he had to pay for his unspoken thoughts, his hidden desires? As the flames drew closer, he felt a strange sense of calm descend upon him. He'd spent months running from his guilt, from the truth. Now, facing his own mortality, he realized the futility of it all. He couldn't change the past. He couldn't bring Lisa back. All he could do was face the consequences of his actions, of his inaction, and maybe, just maybe, find some measure of peace in the process. The flames roared, their heat searing his skin, he closed his eyes, accepting his fate. But even in the face of death, one thought echoed through his mind, louder than the roar of the fire, more powerful than the fear that gripped him. Forgive me, Lisa. Thank you for your time. Be sure to like and subscribe. Share with your friends.